On this episode, I'm talking about the idea of banning so-called conversion therapy and the truth behind this headline and what's really going on and how this ultimately just hurts children. You're not going to want to miss this, so let's get into it right now. This is Cutting Edge Faith, Cutting Edge Faith, the show that brings you the truth behind the headlines and equips you to live out your faith in the cultural chaos of today. God is on the move right now through people just like you. You were created for influence and impact. Let's take your faith to the next level. Learn more at RyanSHoward.com. And now, here's your host, Dr. Ryan S. Howard. Well, this particular conversation has been at the forefront here for quite some time, but recently in my hometown where I'm from, in Iowa, there's an ordinance in consideration right now at the city council level about banning conversion therapy, and it is deceivingly and fraudulently called and marketed as a youth mental health protection. Now, this is actually the opposite of a youth mental health protection. Now, this is only the latest in the escalation of this around the United States. And this really, though, at a city level is just, I mean, silly. It's it's not enforceable. Uh, The city attorney is not going to enforce it. And it's just not going to actually do anything. So this is really a, a virtue signal. And it's just the latest example of political leaders attempting to attack parental rights and outlaw traditional values. That's right. Not actions, but values. Now, I am uh, very interested in our children's future because children are our future. You see, we must take care of children and protect them. And I'm a member, I was a, a original a member of the original Black Hawk County Mental Health Coalition here in my city. I'm a director today on the Early Childhood Iowa State Board, which I was appointed to by Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds. I'm, I spent a decade as a volunteer reviewing uh, early childhood education grant applications. And I'm a father. <laughs> and With all this experience, I've seen a lot of research. I've seen lots of data, lots of information about mental health, child development, all kinds of things that that kids struggle with, the things that uh, come up, and and how to handle those things, and what kind of programs are effective, and what the results say. And I can tell you, the research does not support so-called conversion conversion therapy bans. And by the way, this also has no legal standing. Now, Boca Raton in Florida and Palm Beach in Florida already passed these these laws, well, not a law, these ordinances in their cities, and they were struck down at the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. So it's really just a virtue signal. That there's no means of enforcement here. And my advice really is for pastors and counselors to just ignore this sort of ordinance or law put into place and leave in Utah actually looking at a law. And but the truth is exposed. And we're going to talk about that here. What's what's really going on here? But we can't be intimidated by these things. We need to do what's right in serving our kids and not give in to these bully self serving tactics of these political leaders. So this these these bands actually hurt kids. Now, what is conversion therapy? What is conversion therapy? Well, (laughs) they, it's very loosely defined. It's not clear. In Utah, they defined it as an act to any practice or treatment that seeks to change the sexual orientation or gender identity of a patient or client. Now, under the age of 18. Now, 19 states have banned this. And it's it's frequently labeled conversion therapy, but it's 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 marketed as protecting children, but it's the opposite. Like we're gonna we're gonna talk about that and get into. Now, this they link this to a, a sort of physical abuse or drug abuse or and suicide, and they try to they they use these politicized statements 
from medical associations and these activist groups to support these claims. But it's, you know, of course they could find examples of abuse and it could be even unrelated and they'll use it. And, and there could be harmful practices. And though, but if they do exist, those should be prosecuted under existing law. We have laws in place. So we don't need new laws. Because that's not what this is about. See, these are these, – these so-called counseling bans are not actually targeting a particular practice. What it's targeting is a particular value, a particular set of values. And really what's happening is these cities and these states are disagreeing with the views about human sexuality and biology held by many professionals and many parents, most professionals and most parents, medical professionals and most parents. Now, many medical professionals and parents prefer to try to help a child accept their body the way it is rather than medically alter them. Now, that is in stark contrast to the recommendation by LGBT activists, which mandates immediate and unquestioning affirmation of a child's stated gender ideology, gender identity, rather. Immediate and unquestioning affirmation. Now, this could even come from a school leader, a school counselor, a school uh, teacher, administrator. Actual instances uh, have have come out of teachers re- suggesting to a child, well, maybe they're in the wrong body. Maybe they're in the wrong body. Even without a parent, parents knowing or being involved. And that can start a what's called a social transition. Where they get a new wardrobe, new name, so-called new pronouns, and eventually that leads to a medical transition. You know, kids can't get puberty blockers at age nine. Now, <laughs> and cross horm- cross sex hormones at fourteen, and sex reassignment surgery at eighteen. Now, actually, we've seen sex reassignment surgery down to sixteen. Matt Walsh's video, What is a Woman? And I've even heard stories of down to 13 years old. Now, these medical treatments, these so-called treatments, permanently can permanently sterilize children. Do you know what Lupron is? Lupron is what they give to these kids to supposedly pause puberty. But the, Lupron was used originally to ca- chemically castrate sex offenders. <laughs> It's not funny, but it's crazy. And they there is there is no these perm, these are permanently sterilizing children and the, who are not even old enough to understand life the lifelong implications of these treatments. And th- these treatments lack any solid medical or scientific support. There's nothing, absolutely nothing. Anything they have is just like a testimonial which actually a lot of people are detransitioning now, highly regretting these these life-altering decisions they made. Now, a, a, there's strong evidence for what's called watchful waiting, which is an approach that is treating gender dysphoria in minors, which actually kids with actual gender dysphoria is like a thousands of a percent. Like it's like it's very little actual clinically diagnosed gender dysphoria. Where they physically feel like they're in the wrong body versus just having anxiety and being uncomfortable and a more typical type thing. But it's caught on, like I've talked about in previous episodes, as a social contagion. And it's just – it's spreading. Like anorexia did, like bulimia did, like cutting did. These are not healthy ways to deal with anxiety. And – But this watchful waiting approach gives time and actually can explore what's really an underlying cause rather than having these permanent interventions, this aggressive permanent interventions. And actually research shows that 80 to 95 percent, up to 95 percent of children who experience this sort of uh, questioning or uh, uncertainty but don't actually transition even socially, 
their distress will resolve on its own over time, especially after puberty, right? Shocker. There's a nice correlation there. Now, what this reminds me of, calling this conversion therapy, reminds me of in India where they have uh, the conversion, uh, religious conversion laws where you can't force somebody to become a Christian. Well, of course, we know as Christ followers, you can't force anybody to become a Christian. It's a heart issue. You know, a person needs to surrender and give their heart to the Lord and repent. It's a personal choice. It's not actions on the outside that you do. But they have these laws that they can just throw in the face of these people. If somebody comes and 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 converts, they have to like tell their city. They have to tell their <laughs> Uh, the people, the leaders in their city, and then they can investigate and all this stuff. And who who forced them to convert? And then they've got to prove all this. And it's like this is crazy. And this that's what this reminds me of. Now, <laughs> who's really doing the forced conversion here? Isn't that interesting? Who's really doing the conversion therapy? You know, many I, I talk. I mentioned many young people who formerly identified as transgender report that doctors and therapists directed them to hormonal hormonal and surgical intervention rather than helping them address any underlying cause of this this gender uh, dysphoria or questioning or uncertainty or whatever it is somebody just suggests this and they think well and this is fraud. I said it's fraud in the beginning because it's it, it gives them the impression that, oh, finally, the answer. This is why there's so much anxiety and this is why it's happening and this is going to relieve everything. And it doesn't. It comes back empty. And so fraud is a good word and deceiving, deceitful and fraud. And by the way, a top surgery, what they call it, mastectomy, $70,000. Yeah. You know, if a child... Uh, gets on hormones and does cross-sex hormones, gets on Lupron, cross-sex hormones, does all this, gets the surgery. Over their lifetime, they'll spend upwards of, uh, I think I saw, I saw anywhere between $100,000 up to over a million dollars on treatments and therapies and all that. Pretty good business for people, uh, for these butchers, as Jordan Peterson calls them. I think rightfully so. Taking advantage of children and adults even. With this fraudulent uh, practice, malpractice, violating Hippocratic oaths to do no harm. This is infuriating. I mean, you could probably sense that in in my uh, tone. But we should be infuriating. We should be infuriated. There's nothing to be relaxed or calm about with regard to this. Now, I, I read an example of a young woman who spent... Uh, a year in transition and she reported that the therapist authorized her to use testosterone injections after five total hours of counseling, five hours of counseling. That could be two sessions or one long session. And the doctor who prescribed the hormones. So she got the prescription. She goes to the doctor. The doctor didn't even open the letter containing the therapist's authorization. (laughs) This is like a conveyor belt. Money, 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 money. Not, they do not care about the development of these children. Now, uh, you know, if this goes in, you know, if these pass, then patients lose access to counseling that could steer them away from unnecessarily unnecessary treatments and surgeries and life-altering decisions. It takes choices away from doctors and parents. Now, if you think this doesn't have serious repercussions outside of, I mean, of course, I've I've demonstrated serious repercussions for children, for families. But in Ohio, parents actually lost custody of their daughter, at least in part because they wanted to pursue counseling rather than hormone treatments for gender confusion, gender dysphoria. Can you believe that? That was a part of the reason to lose custody. You think that you think that this is the just the beginning of legal restrictions on parents' ability to make decisions for their own children? <laughs> this is 
this is the tip of the iceberg. I mean, this should be the bottom of the iceberg. Like, oh, well, we finally arrived. There's nothing else left to take. Well, this is like, we're just, they're just getting started. And, well, that's the reality. So, you know, this really is, in this battle over this transgender ideology, children are once again the victims of adult political disputes. And these shouldn't even be political disputes. I mean, this is this is ridiculous. This, this isn't even a conversation we should be having. And here we are. Now, the, really, under... Uh, Children that have discomfort or teenagers have discomfort or anxiety. It's highest levels it's ever been at, from what I'm seeing, what I'm the research I'm seeing. And but under uh, exploring the underlying cause of a child's discomfort with their their body or their biological sex, or uh, providing this more uh, biological sex identity that they have that they were born with. And affirming that, that counseling is is not discredited or abusive. Just under underlying causes. What's going? What's really going on here? Why? Why is this child uncomfortable? Why is this child? You know what's going on? And it, it, that's not. It hasn't been shown to be discredited or abusive. It's, it's quite. In fact, it's very effective. <laughs> so here's the question: What's a better and this is from an article from Hillsdale, but what's a better definition of conversion therapy? Someone who talks and helps a girl who doesn't conform to traditional gender norms and doesn't want to accept her body, uh, you know, and, and, and is not comfortable and is not sure how to handle that, talking through that to try and get to what's really going on there. Is that a good version of conversion therapy? Or is injecting her with testosterone and providing her with a double mastectomy because she doesn't want to wear dresses or play with dolls? What sounds like a conversion therapy to you? Well, I would say the second sounds like a forced conversion. Because like I said, immediate and unquestioning affirmation. That's all that, that's what happens. After this, any indication whatsoever, whether it was from the student, from a friend, or from a a counselor, a so-called trusted adult, or from a teacher. So this is the reality today. This is absurd, and 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 it's this is about money. It's about destroying the family. It's about des- destroying the values, biblical values that we have, and we need to fight for this. We've been playing defense way too long. And it's time to play offense. And that means we need to be more aggressive, more uh, forthright with the truth. We need to be speaking it loud and proud and not apologizing for things that we don't need to apologize for. And not knowingly saying things that, that we know not to be true. Referring to someone as a female when we know they're a male or vice versa. And that's not a loving thing to do. And I and I, I totally am coming at this from a place of love. You know, if somebody's about to drink a glass of poison and they want you to help them feel better about that, are you going to tell them and agree with them that this, this poison is safe? Go for it. Or are you going to take the risk of them being upset with you by telling them that it's it's poison? You You, you really shouldn't drink that. Now, of course, they have the choice to drink it if they want to, but we're not, we're not. We're talking about children, and we're talking about the state and forcing children to go down these paths, thinking there's going to be relief when there is an insanely huge, growing amount of people who are detransitioning. And there's a movie called Transmission, and I talked about it on another podcast recently. It talks about where this is going. This is going to just massive lawsuits and everybody who's been involved in this, it's, it's game over. And the sooner, the better, the sooner we speak up, the better. And the more clear we are, the better. And the more numbers we have, the better. And this is, I mean, I mentioned I'm in Iowa, the middle of the United States. 
a trifecta Republican state, the state house, the state Senate and the governor, all Republican. And we have these this city considering this ordinance right now. And by the time you listen to this, it may have been passed. And like I said, it's not going to do anything. Uh, it may intimidate some people, but but the community is not going to be intimidated. We know the truth. The truth is out. And we can't be have this emotional blackmail continue. That's that's what they use. They use don't, emotional blackmail and sympathy, and they prey on people's ignorance. And I don't mean that in an insulting way. They prey on people's just uh, not having awareness of the reality of the situation and what's actually going to help because they'll say very emotionally manipulative things like to a person they'll ask them well you know if their son is questioning his gender they'll say well do they want to have a dead son or a daughter that's alive and i mean this just oh this infuriating what an evil thing to say to somebody manipulative and so i mean you can see this isn't a very uplifting topic because it's just insane i mean how can this be but praise god that we know the truth we know the truth and so we can inform those around us you can share this with others we this is what's really happening and this is people are experiencing this like i said in iowa in iowa there are uh, schools that are helping children transition in my city i know Right, right here where I live, there, there's like a oh, around a hundred thousand people in in this uh, little area that we live in here. Seven, eight year olds transition, so called transition. One year, a boy. Next year, comes back, and and the teacher announces that he's a girl, and the class is like, "What? What is that? What do you mean, he's a girl now? What? That doesn't make any sense." And there's confusion, and you see, you've seen what we have. Uh, was a sixth grader? Basically, reading a book, he reading a book that he found in his school library, that was basically a a, a porn pornographic material. It was explaining a, a sexually explicit scene, and the librarian asked him if he wanted the the visual version of that. And his dad, obviously, he he checked it out, took it home, showed it to his dad, and they came and talked to the talked to the school board. <laughs> I mean, in Iowa, I did an, I did an episode uh, with San- State Senator Sandy Salmon. She was in the House at the time. But you can go back and look. It's called Porn in Schools. It's the It's got a, a few topics we talked about. But it talks about how there's a special carve-out in Iowa law and many other states as well that if a, allows basically a, a, administ- a, a school staff to show something to a child – that is basically classified as pornography that if they did outside the context of the school, they would go to jail. <laughs> you understand? So there's a carve out. Why? Uh, well, back in the day, apparently they were concerned about, well, sex ed in school. We don't want them. We don't want this to be construed. And so let's have this little carve out so that it's, you know, they can have these conversations in school safely and not be worried about being uh, you know, having criminal activity and all that. So they made this little carve out. Well, now it's escalated into full on material like I just shared. <laughs> so, I mean, all of this comes together to just show this great attack on human sexuality, biblical sexuality, the biblical, you know, uh, foundations of all of this stuff, this reality. And it's under the guise of helping. And we cannot let these these ways continue they're deceitful and they're fraudulent and we need to call them for what they are and i really love what matt walsh has done he's done so much great stuff here and all of this while uh tennessee is going the opposite direction they actually banned they are the first state this is on uh as of uh, march 2nd today today the last couple days first state to ban to pass a ban on public drag shows in the park you can't do a drag show in the park can't do sexually explicit stuff in the park can't do all this stuff yeah right that needs to be banned right can you believe that yes well they did ban it because it's been happening with children around i mean you can see all kinds of videos today 
And what happens, what should be, well, it shouldn't be happening at all, but they do this in nightclubs and they don't they recognize that like uh, drag queens, drag queen, the idea was originally invented because men, they hated women and they didn't, they wanted to make fun of them and they would do this in these gay clubs. Like that's how that came about. And now that's, oh, let's have them read children's stories and do some dances in the public park in the square. So this is this is lunacy. I mean, can you believe that I, I'm talking about this on this podcast? But well, I think that we covered we covered the ground here. There's a lot more to say about this and a lot of rabbit holes we could go down. But you can see again, children are the victims here of this adult political dispute that shouldn't even be a dispute at all. And the states and cities and these things are trying to take choices away from doctors and parents. And there, you know, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Like I said, that could that would lead to gl- greater legal restrictions on parents' ability to make decisions for their own children, not only medical but other decisions as well. So we got to stand up, we got to stand loud, and we got to be strong, and we got to do it together. And uh, we got to be speaking up about it. I think the pulpits should be talking about this because when the pulpits are silent, it gives the impression that it doesn't matter or that it's not really there or it's not, you know, instead of equipping the people how to deal with these things. And it doesn't need to be a full sermon. It could be a few minutes here or it could be a, hey, Sunday afternoon or Tuesday afternoon, evening, we're going to have a little special session. We're going to talk about what's going on, get you informed. You know, encourage your pastor to do that. Share this with him. Pray that your pastor and elders and everybody in the church would would want this, would just be provoked. The Holy Spirit would provoke this to talk about these things going on because this is how we get out of this. God is is the answer. God is the answer. We need bold men and women who are willing to, to uh, say whatever the cost I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand for this because it's the right thing to do because, because children matter and they're our future. So will you stand with me? All right. Well, thank you for joining. Head over to RyanSHoward.com to get more past episodes and to get in touch with me. Let me know what you want to hear about on the show and what questions that you have that I can answer. Thanks again for joining. God bless, and we'll see you in the next episode. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe, and you can help spread the word by leaving a five-star review and sharing it with your friends. Visit RyanSHoward.com. To learn more about living the intentional, influential, and impactful life you were created for.